Okay, so we've done a beginner guide for Nino already. Done a combo guide as well. Two combo guides, beginner and advanced. So now it's about time we get into the advanced guide for Nina. And there's a few things I want to talk about here in regards to this advanced guide. Um, so let's get straight, let's get right into it then. Let's get right into it. Um, of course, I got my notes down here just to make sure I don't forget anything. First thing I want to talk about is the movement. A lot of people always mention her sway, her back sway like this. Uh, just to clear the air, the input for this is full circle back will perform this. Now what you see a lot of the Nina players do is pull circle back into side step left, which gives you this. Alright, you can do this slowly as well, like slow. I'm gonna practice this. It works. As you get the hang of it, you'll start doing it a lot quicker. So it'll look a bit more like something like this. Alright, it'll look a bit like this. You'll barely get the actual side step to come out. You're doing the improvement. But that just takes a bit of time, you'll get the hang of it as you play, you know. But that is basically just a sway back and how it works. But I want to talk about why you utilize it. A lot of Nina players want to learn how to do it, but they don't actually understand why they're doing it. They're sort of just doing it anytime they can, just for the sake of it. The whole reason why you actually use this is because it makes your next move less telegraph. In Tekken, a lot of the time when your things get blocked, for example, let's say I go for uh, down forward 3 plus 4. If this get blocks a lot of the time, yes it's reactable, but not only is it reactable, if it's being blocked a lot of the time, it's usually because I'm using it in a very telegraphed manner. So the opponent sees it coming before it even comes. Maybe you didn't change your patterns up, so you're doing it in the same moments of the time, and your opponent's picked up on that. Now the point of using the back sway is because this makes your next attack less telegraph. When you're doing this, your opponent cannot possibly tell what you're really about to do. Unless they really have a hard read on you, you're not letting on what your next move is going to be as you're doing this. So it's very important. You could be doing this into throw, of course. You could be doing uh, sway back into forward four. You could be doing sway back, five step, down forward, three plus four. It really makes your moves less telegraph. So keep that in mind as to why you even want to use this in the first place. Very strong, of course. Also, it's pretty evasive. You know, you can separate yourself. You can create a nice distance from your opponent really quickly like this. So, of course, it's it's really important to you. But the main use of this, in my opinion, is definitely just making yourself less telegraphed. Your opponent won't know what's coming next. Right, so that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, then I want to talk about some of the rare moves from Nina that you might not see a lot of Nina players utilizing in their gameplay. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is 1 plus 2. Now this is a homing attack. Now of course every character should be using homing attacks of course uh, because this is an advanced guide so as you get higher up in the ranks you do come across people who sidestep a lot. People start sidestepping your moves a lot more than usual. Now, when you come across people that sidestep, so for example, if I do this, see, sidestep into my weak side, right? Stuff like this starts getting annoying, right? So, homing attacks are important. Now, in the previous video, I talked about 3 plus 4. This is another homing attack she has. However, this is 18 frames, so it's a bit slower, and it's better used at longer ranges. Whereas, uh, 1 plus 2 can be used at a shorter range, and it's also 16 frames up frames so it's actually a lot quicker well not a lot quicker it's by two frames but those two frames are significant when you're this close to your opponent you don't really want to get possibly jabbed out right so when your opponent tends to sidestep a lot after certain attacks what you want to be doing is threatening with one plus two this also leaves you plus eight on hit there you do create a separation from your opponent as well so it's like you're not really in much of a danger zone after this. You're pretty far from your pocket. Right? Like Kazia at this range can't really hell sweep me. You'd have to walk forward and then hell sweep me. I'm pretty safe-ish. So maybe forward forward two will hit me, but that's about it. But yeah, against people that tend to sidestep a lot, which happens a lot at higher ranks, one plus two is your best go-to for close encounters. Make sure you guys are using that a lot. Uh, and then we have forward, forward, forward. This is another one you don't see many new players using. Everybody knows about forward, forward, right? Everyone knows this, right? 
but not a lot of people use forward forward four. Let me just take this off. Forward forward four is this one here. If you don't do anything afterwards, she stays on the uh, laying on the floor. All right, and I'm plus nine here, as you can see. It is range dependent. If I do it from really close, nine further away, plus ten. So depending on the range, will depend how plus or negative you can possibly be. Now, the good thing about this is you can actually press um, one or two as you land in order to rise like this. See that? That was one. And now that's two. It doesn't really matter which one you press either way. As long as you can press one of them to get up. And as you can see, I'm actually plus. I was plus two. Now from this range. Controller disconnected for no reason. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? From this range. Plus two, maybe a bit closer. Plus two. See if I can get a more plus maybe. Plus three. So as you can see, it's pretty range dependent. But you'll get the hang of it as you as you play on like how plus you are. As long as you're plus two or plus three, you're fine to be honest, because you're still out in the at advantage. Um the frame though does change quite a bit against the bears, though, against like Kuma and Panda. You can be negative against those characters because those characters have weird hurt boxes, so it's kind of specific. But for the rest of the cards, for the majority, the frame there stays the same. Now, the reason why this is a good move in general, one, it reaches very far. If you look at forward four, forward four does reach far. But in comparison to forward forward four, plus four there, so the longer, the further away you are, the more plus it seems to get. Forward forward four has more range than forward four. So that's the reason to use it. And also, when you rise, you rise in a crouching state. But if I press one after that, I get while rising one, which again, very much more evasive than if this was blocked, for example. Because if your opponent tries to press a button and they press one, let's say they jab, you would actually go underneath their jab. But yeah, pretty much it's very evasive. And when you get up, you're in a crouching state. So you have access to all your wild rising moves. Wild rising one plus two. So wild rising one, one plus two. You have uh, you could do a bunch. Of, you could get up and not do anything. You could get up and you could launch. If they want to press a button as well, they will lose. Like they'll they'll get launched if they actually press in between that. If they were to press it, they would get launched. So that's really good. You get a free. We launch into a combo, whatever you want to do. So that's a really good oppressive. And yeah, the main thing for me that takes it up a notch over forward four. I think forward four is a better tool in general, but one of the things that's better about forward forward four is the range. The range. The range it covers is really good. And it's three plus frames. If you need to get in from here and you don't know how to, this is three plus frames. Uh covers so much space. Like it's hard to get away from. They'll have to be preemptively sidestepping already. You know? So very good move. Very good move. And then we have Evil Mist, which is the next move I want to talk about. Um, you may have seen other Ninas do this before, but I think this is something I think every Nina who wants to be a bit more advanced should implement into their game. And Evil Mist is used as a very good bait against Rage Arts. Now I want to demonstrate this really quickly. You can use Evil Mist to bait Rage Arts as Meaty. Loves. So if I was to do a Rage Art, so this, block all. So if I do this, all right, there we go. If I was to do this, specifically works best after you do a heat smash if i do this as you can see kazuya is going to do one one right so if i do that heat smash again but this time kazuya is going to instead of doing one one he's going to do his rage up Just like that all right so now he's in rage out there all right cool so now I'm going to do Heat Smash, and as soon as I do Heat Smash, I'm going to cancel my Heat Smash into Evil Mist. 
If you don't have to do Evil Mist, it is um, Core Circle Forward, her Duckling Step. Core Circle Forward into 2 plus 3, which gives you the Evil Mist. So you're going to cancel your Heat Smash into Evil Mist. And then you're going to block. Now, the trick to get this consistently is you want to do the evil mist as soon as possible. You don't want to delay it. If you delay it, this happens. That might have been delayed. Nah, I did that. If you delay it, you tend to get hit. You tend to get hit. Yeah, like that. So you want to do it as quickly as possible to make sure that you timed it correctly. But as soon as your heat smash animation ends, you want to go straight into it. So let me show you what this looks like. And you get your punish, of course. You want to do. So, when you're in a situation when you have your heat activated and you want to use your heat smash, but after the heat smash, you're scared that they're going to do a rage art. Uh, this is an option you can use you know. by itself this is unblockable anyways so this could be good to end around it is a high so opponents can duck underneath it so beware about that however this is unblockable so can be good in situations where they're in the pixel also if you're scared of rage or you can use this and you'll be safe either ways as far as i know this works on every character in the game so yeah, this is a very good, uh, very good tool Nina has. Like, make sure to use it. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is her 3 plus 4, which is the other Herman move we were talking about. Uh, 18 frame startup, really good range on it actually, very good range for a Herman attack. And the reason I want to talk about this is because this is hit confirmable. And it's minus, on block, this is only minus 10. So you're not really going to be punished unless you do it from this close. Right, which you wouldn't use that this close because why you'd use one plus two at this range. Like Around this range, though, is when three plus four becomes more of a threat, this is where you should be using it. And it's hit confirmable now, hit confirmable into what it doesn't exactly combo into anything on hit, like on hit, it's not going to combo into anything. However, you hit confirm it into your ducking step, which is your down forward, which is your course circle forward uh, movement step. Like this. Now, when you actually use 3 plus 4, you don't need to do the core cool circle forward. You just hold forward or tap forward and it gives you the step. Right, all you got to do is tap forward and it gives you the step. Right, so how you would basically just use this as a hit confirm. And if you do get the hit, you can hit confirm into palm. Let me take off random block quickly. Um, and then here we go. You can hit confirm this into forward one you can confirm this into forward three low pretty much whatever you want even the throw right whatever you want to go into it goes into your ducking step so you have all the options you would have from your that from your normal ducking step however you just get it after three plus four now so again this is a very good tool you can use in order to apply pressure to your opponent and yeah there's no risk behind it you know it's a hit confirmable if it doesn't hit you just stay blocking you don't need to do anything after that it's only minus 10 and you won't get punished from further out. So when you do get the hit, make sure you hit confirm in this step and go for an option. Go for something. All right, the next thing I want to talk about here is optimal wall transitions, like optimal floor breaks and optimal wall breaks. I made a video showing combos using the wall breaks and stage transitions and stuff. But I want to talk about the optimal way to actually break the walls using Nina. I have to go to another stage to do this. So let's go ahead. Okay, so here we have a wall stage that can demonstrate the optimal wall breaks with Nina. Um, it's fairly simple. The idea is once you get them towards the wall, the what the moves you want to break the wall is generally you want to be using something like forward forward three right if you look at the damage on forward forward three right you have forward you have uh, how much is that 24 damage and then if you use something like forward one plus two 
24 damage. Back one plus two is on is 20 damage. So what you want to be breaking the walls with is forward forward three or forward one plus two. Because that will give you the most singular damage before the floor break. Alright, so fast to do a combo. Da, 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 da. One plus two, and then you'd carry on your combo. But what you want to be doing is using forward one plus two or forward forward three in order to break. That'll give you the optimal damage before the floor actually breaks. That, and then you can carry on the combo. Just want to make sure you guys know the optimal routes before you break the wall. Let's go to another stage because it changes depending on what stage you're at. Okay, now for walls that require multiple hits before they break, for example, Sanctum, you cannot break it in with a single hit. For example, if I was here and I did this, this, this will not break the wall. However, it would break the previous stages, right? This wall is a bit harder. These are hard walls. So you have to use a different string in order to break it in one go with me now. Now, not every character in the game can break this wall in one in a single combo. However, Nina can. And that is by finishing your combo with this string. Uh, one for one. One for one. You finish with that at the wall. And if all the hits connect, you will break it in one go. Let me demonstrate. And you get the wall break. And you finish up the combo. Right? So that is for hard walls. You want to be using the one for one at the end of the combo to make sure you get the wall break in, in, in one go. Otherwise, you'd have to like have about two attempts. Right, next, next stage. Okay, now for floors where you break the ground for floor break. This should apply to all floor break um, stages. You usually want to break. So one plus four, if you look at the damage on this, 20 damage. Then you look at the damage on up forward one, also 20 damage. These are usually the, typically the two moves you would use to break the ground. Now it doesn't really matter which move you use. Just make sure that those are the moves you're using in order to break the floor. And uh, you do fine. Was, was not going to break in one go. Uh, second go, and then you get the floor break. So one plus four, or up forward one, are the two moves you want to be using to break the floor. Um, I think the most optimal floor break, like the absolute most optimal floor break, which is not during a combo, you'd have to go for it and hope that it works, is your throw. You have um, uh, down forward, you have down forward, down forward one, this. And this this would break the floor. And you get the throw unskilled throw damage into floor break, and then you get to continue your combo. This is probably the most optimal floor break Nina has outside of uh, just doing it off of a natural combo. Into this. Or into this. So yeah, just keep that in mind. When um when you're able to break your throw, keep that keep your options in mind. You either want to do your throw or you want to go for. But if you've landed a combo, you may as well break the floor. But if you haven't landed a combo yet, just understand that this is a one plus two break. And it's definitely an option to break the ground for a huge amount of damage. But keep that in mind. Right. Okay, so let's move on to the. I believe this is the last thing I want to talk about here. Let's change stage again. Okay, so I want to talk about optimizing Nina's heat and how to get the most out of her heat. You know, I know um, beginner players or even some intermediate players, they pop heat and instantly like, yeah, I'm just gonna spend it. It's a free use, not much risk behind it. I can just sort of do it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then I'm still plus, right? However, I want to make sure you guys get the most out of your heat you know and you don't just waste it or make some good use out of it right so i want to talk about different situations and how you would apply your heat first i want to talk about 
um, utilizing this move right here. Back one plus two. You can use it two times. And then you have one more heat usage, right? So you can do it pretty much three times until your heat runs out. You can use it twice. You can use it twice. And then you still have enough time to pretty much use your heat smash if you're quick enough. Uh, but the the reality on why I want to talk about this is because at the wall, this is a better option than using your actual heat smash. Because this wall splats at the wall, and you still get your combo, this is better than using heat smash because your heat smash hitting, you don't get a combo off your heat smash. You just get the animation and it splats them on the floor. You don't get an extension or anything of the sort. Right? If this was a floor breaking stage, you'd get the floor break and another combo, but there's no floor breaks on this stage, right? So you should be using down, I'm um, sorry, not down. You should be using back one plus two because you can take them to the wall. And yeah, it's pretty good, um, pretty good reach. Can I reach it? Yeah, see that? Reaches from pretty far. Reaches from quite far. So make sure you guys are aware of where you are on the stage and if you should be using bat one plus two instead of your actual heat smash in situation. And the damage, the damage on this is really good too. 45 damage is good. It's not more than a heat smash, but it's very good damage, especially if you get the wall. So if you get the wall, you're doing more damage than your heat smash would have done. That was 82 damage and it wasn't even an optimal combo. So yeah, but be aware of that. Another thing, your punishes change. So let's say Kazuya was to do a hell sweep mid screen, right? Let's make Kazuya do a hell sweep. Can we do All right, so Kazuya's gonna do a hell sweep and I'm gonna punish it how I would normally punish, how you would normally punish hell sweep, right? Uh, okay, controller, please. There we go. All right, so you got normal punish, get your combo, whatever you want. To, why does my controller keep on disconnecting? Okay, do that again. All right, so you get what you get, right? Uh, of course, it's minus 24, so if you want to do that and more, you could also do this. Right, uh, but what I'm trying to get to here is instead of doing that, this is what you would do mid screen, right? And that's outside the heat, right? However, when you are in heat, right? When you are in heat, depending on where you're on the screen, you should no longer be trying to launch this. When you're in heat, this becomes more optimal than doing this. That's about 49 damage. This this becomes more optimal because you also get the wall. Right, that's 55 damage, 56 at the wall. I wasn't even at the wall. 55, yeah. So that just becomes more more optimal. So if the same, this doesn't have to be Casio specific. This is any low, which is literally uh that's 14 frames. Any low which is 13 frames. Uh I 13. So 13 frames uh, recovery. You would want to block and instead of launching like this that now changes that changes to your wire rising one plus two like this that changes to that a lot more damage let me actually get it closer to the wall whoops hold on do that again uh, and you get your combo there but you get the picture it's much more cool than doing this this is what you would do from mid-screen but anytime you're close to a wall that needs to change if you're in heat specifically if you're in heat if you're in heat anytime you're close to a wall make sure this is what you're doing you get way more damage out of that way more damage out of that so that's why I wanted to touch on uh, for the main part for for the heat on these stages, on the wall stages, you want to be using your punishes correctly because the punisher, the punishment changes depending on 
what stage you're on and obviously how far you are away from the wall whether you're using your launch punish mid-screen that's fine or whether you're using your y rising one plus uh rising one into one plus two in heat in heat yeah a lot more damage now there's one more thing i want to talk about but we gotta go into the next stage okay now nina's heat smash doesn't break walls but it does break floors right heat smash it does break now if you haven't realized this stage is usually it usually takes two um two attempts to break the floor so if i did a regular combo like this i did this one plus four it now turns red which means if i do it a second time now the floor breaks so it usually takes three attempts before you can break the ground uh at the beginning of the stage however with the heat smash heat smash breaks the floor in one attempt now why is this significant because it changes how you also play so if you have activated heat let's just say your opponent whiffs something and you go for a whiff punish right uh let's say what is it gonna do? Okay, so Kazuya can do forward forward two, and I'll go for a whiff punish that I would normally do if I wasn't in heat. Right? I usually do something like this. My combo, right? Now, in this situation, I wouldn't be able to break the wall, even if I, um, even if I went for break a floor break combo. So let me do that again. This move is crazy tracking i mean crazy range for some reason all right so let's say i do something like this right it would take me a second attempt to break the ground i'd need another launch combo again right however if i change that with punish to a heat smash everything changes all of a sudden i break the ground instantly and I still get to carry on my combo. More up for more damage. So I want you guys to think about that when playing the game. Depending on what stage you are, all your options change. All of your decision making also changes. Your whiff punishing changes. What you want to do on the ground changes. So yeah, I just wanted to um, make that clear. Hopefully that helps a lot of you guys. And I believe that's my final point for the advanced Nina stuff. I wanted to sort of talk on things that I haven't seen many people talk about myself. And yeah, hopefully this helps you guys this game. And combining this with the beginner guide, I know a lot of you guys are coming from the beginner guide, coming to more advanced stuff now. So combine both things that you've learned. And yeah, you guys should get a lot of results playing the game with this. But yeah, hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, that's going to be it for me in this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let me know if there's anything more you guys want to learn or there's a new video you want me to make regarding Nina and yeah I'm gonna keep updating you guys with new things I find about the game and new tech or new discoveries and yeah man, if you guys enjoyed it make sure you leave a like subscribe if you're new to the channel tell your friends about the channel and yeah I'll catch you guys in the next video peace